Hey guys, today is a very special day, and it's not just a special Tutorial Tuesday day, but if you are watching in the US and you're an American, you know that today is the 4th of July. And of course, everybody in the world has the 4th of July, but here in the US, it's an extra special day because it's our Independence Day. <laughs> So happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day to everybody here in the States. Um, and for those of you who are not in the States watching, I hope that you're celebrating along with us too. So today I thought it'd be fun, since it's the 4th of July, you know you're probably getting, you might be getting ready for like a uh, cookout, you might be getting together with family, you might be going to see some big fireworks, but odds are you either have some time to kill, you're trying to beat the heat but not stay bored until before the cookout starts, or else you've got lots and lots of kids running around. So today I have a DIY that everybody loves. My family does some fireworks and things every year, and me and my sisters, we make this project, and we hang it out our window, and everyone's like, that's so cool. And so I finally decided that I'm going to show you how to make this. And what we're going to make today is a paper chain American flag. So I've got a helper with me today, Beck Pie from Beck Pie Slice of, Slice of Life. You'll see her on here at some points. And I'm going to walk you through the steps on how I make this. So before we get into the tutorial itself, I want to get you guys excited for this. I have my special notebook here in which for years I've written down what I do and I finally actually formulated it and got it down to a science here. And today what I'm going to show you is how you go from this to this to this to this. Okay, so hopefully now you're excited about what we're going to be making and you might be going, oh no, this is so hard, but I promise you, we're going to go from this to this. You can make these. They're not hard. You just staple them together. So let's look at what we're going to need. We are going to need lots of paper for this. I've got these jumbo sheets of construction paper that I think I got them from a dollar store somewhere. You can either use giant sheets like these or you can use the normal size construction paper that's like this. So you're going to want lots of red construction paper. You'll need some blue construction paper. You don't need as much blue as you need with the red. You're going to also want lots of white construction paper, or if you don't want to go out and buy white construction paper, you can either use just plain printer paper or use um, car white cardstock. So I just got some printer paper here that I'm going to be using today. And then you might not realize this, but you're actually going to need some yellow. I know that doesn't seem like a patriotic color, but this is how you're going to be able to help hang your flag up. So it'll just kind of give it a yellow, like a flagpole kind of look, and then you'll be able to hang up your flag however you want. And now that we've got our paper, we're also going to need to cut our paper into strips like this. So I've got this really nice slicer here by Fiskars, and I love this thing because you just put the paper in here, you've got a little blade here, it goes whoop, 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 and so it makes it way easier, and you can see that these strips are pretty straight, whereas if you're cutting with scissors, it might take a while and be hard to do. So I would recommend you get a cutter like this, and the last thing we're going to need is a stapler, and lots of staples. There's a lot of loops. Um, that's why I use staplers. I've seen people do things like this with tape, but I found that the staples go a lot faster. And now let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is cut our paper into strips. So we want to go from this to this. So to get there, what we need to do is we need to use our handy dandy paper slicer. This one by Fiskars, I really like it. It has a nice blade that slides along. This lifts up. It has some measurements so you can measure things, um, and it's not a big deal. Now what I do want to mention is I have some different sizes here. I've got this yellow in the white paper, and they're standard size construction paper you can see here. But then I have this red and blue that is jumbo. However, if you look at the red and blue, it's basically like two pieces of construction paper stuck side by side. So these still work really nice, and I think it was a little cheaper to buy the larger size, so that's why I went with this. So when you slice the paper, I'll use a red here. You don't have to do anything different with the longer pieces than with these pieces, because the direction we cut is the long way. You don't want to cut the strips the short way, or else your loops will be too tight. So you want the loops to be big enough, so that way the chains can make the flag messy, but if they're too tight, it'll be harder to make. So that's why I want to make sure we go this way, that we make them long strips and not go this way and make them short strips. So we're just going to start. We can lift this up and slide our paper. I'll also mention that if your blade is sharp enough, you can do several sheets at once. Now if you look at mine here, 
you may notice that these marks here that it goes ahead and measures how um, wide things are so you can use that to line yourself up somewhat but for me I just kind of play it by ear I go about an inch thick so for me what that means is on here the measurements are about three quarters of an inch so I just hang a little bit extra over my edge over the edge of the slicer so then just give it a quick slice and then you can slide your construction paper farther along another quick slice slide your construction paper along and you're going to keep going until you end up with a whole bunch of paper strips in each of your colors. I will go ahead and show you this here, that you might notice some of these are different thicknesses than others. These two here, you know, they're not quite the same thickness, but that's okay. When you're working on your flag, it, they don't have to be exact. That's what's nice about it. There's some room for, you know, some thicker loops for some thinner loops. So you just want to make sure that they're roughly consistent, but it doesn't have to be exact. So when you cut your strips, you want to cut a whole bunch of red strips. You'll need a lot of the red strips. You'll need a good amount of the blue. You're going to want lots of white. And then you're also going to need a few yellow strips. The yellow you don't need too many. Probably two pieces of construction paper will be enough. Um, but with the red and the white especially, you want to make sure you have plenty. Now if you're like me, you might get tired of slicing a bunch of times. So what I usually do is I just start by slicing up some of the different colors and I'll use what I've got to start connecting them and then as I need more I'll slice more red or more white just depending on what colors I need. So we're going to use this nice slicer to go from this to this. So now it's time to take our paper strips and we're going to start connecting them together. This is where you're going to want to pay attention to the pattern. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and I'm going to list the pattern here and then I'll go ahead and I'll list each step as we work along um, so you can start to get the idea. So you might be looking at that like that and going, what in the world does that mean? Basically, I've abbreviated each of the colors by their first letter. So B stands for blue, W stands for white, and R stands for red. And so the idea is we're going to make these long individual chains like this, and they're all going to be 33 chains long. So this obviously is not a chain of 33, but when we make each of the 13 chains that I showed in the instructions, they're going to be 33 chains long, and we're going to follow the pattern that I explained. So for our very top row of our flag, which I've labeled row A, we are going to do 13 blue chains followed by 20 red chains. So to make your chain, it sometimes helps if you count out your colors before you start. Uh, and this way, you can just go ahead and quickly work along and don't have to bother counting, or you can count as you go. So it's pretty simple to make the loops. You've got a paper chain like this, and you want to fold it into a loop so that way the ends overlap. So as you can see, we don't want it overlapping a ton because then our loops will be really tiny, but we also don't want it barely overlapping because then we won't be able to get the staple to stay on there. So we're gonna overlap it just enough so that way we can staple it. Take our staple, be careful of your fingers. And there you go, we have our first loop. So to make the next loop, you're going to take your next strip, run it through the loop, press them over, and staple. So for our first row, we need to do 13 blue and then 20 red. So let me get that connected. So now I've just finished connecting row A, and to give you an idea of what your rows will look like, I've got 13 blue, and 20 red. Now you might notice the red are a little bit smaller. This is what I was talking about earlier. If you cut your paper in the wrong direction, you're going to have two small loops. These ones, these someone else cut, so they were cut a little bit um, smaller. So that's why it looks a lot shorter. These are the size your loop should be. So just make sure that you cut the paper this direction, not this direction. So then our next instructions say that we need a chain of blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, blue, white, blue. So basically what that means is you're gonna make a loop with blue, stay put together, then you're gonna add in a white, staple it on there, and you're just gonna basically repeat that process with that chain. And then once you do the blue-white part of the pattern, 
you're going to add 20 white onto the end of it. So you're going to follow this pattern along, just look for each of the rows, there's a total of 13 rows because there's 13 stripes on the flag, and also when I was designing this flag, I was trying to make it as accurate to actual flag dimensions as possible. So some of the proportions are slightly off, but it does have 50 stars and it does have 13 stripes. So that's what I was going for, and the proportions are somewhat close, so it still looks pretty good. So you're gonna wanna head and go ahead and make all 13 of your long chains so what we want to do now that we've completed our long chains, all 13 of them, A through M, we want to lay them out in order, which I kind of have them backwards. So this is my row A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'm also going to go ahead and mention this. You might notice that mine look kind of square. This is actually a flag that I had hanging out the other day. I'm filming this ahead of time. So this is from my 4th of July activities from this past weekend. So it's not actually film, being filmed on a Tuesday, so that's why it's already seen the weather a little bit. I'm kind of deconstructing it and reconstructing it to show you guys what I did. So I've got rows A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And right here we're looking at the union. This is the blue part of the flag. And so it's time to connect these parts. Now what we want to do before we start connecting is we want to make sure that these loops are laying a certain way. If you look at the loops, you can see how I've got this one in correct order because this first loop is laying so you can see the smooth side while this second loop is turned this way. So each loop goes like this. So you want to make sure it's even because if you have any twist in it, I'm going to twist this guy up, you know, these two might look similar, this one and this one, but this guy in the middle doesn't. So we want to start by untwisting all of these. Now what you want to also be aware of is your top loop needs to be laying like this. So on this guy here, even though he was already kind of evened out, I need to make sure that the very first loop on the end is laying like that. So I'm going to lay these all out, smooth them out, make sure they're all untwisted. And I'll just go down as far as, um, I'll just go to the union then and the blue. I won't bother going beyond that. But I wanna make sure these are all nice and untwisted. So the way it works to connect these rows is we're going to put a loop that goes through the two that are beside each other that are laying like this. The ones that are facing this way don't get any extra loops on them, only the ones facing this way. So that's why I started by lining it up so we can easily see which ones need to have loops and which ones don't. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna start with this corner. I'm at the ends of rows G and rows F. I'm going to take my new paper strip and I'm going to go through the top one on row G. Then I'm going to come up through row F, cross the ends over, and staple. So what I've done now is each of these loops here on the end have an extra one connecting them this way. So that means that these ones aren't going to come apart this way either. And I'm going to repeat this process going along this edge here. So I'm going to come to the top one in row F. You'll notice it already has one connecting it to row G, but we're still going to come in this one again, up through the bottom of this one, and staple. Show you one more time. Down that one, up this one, and staple. And so you can see we're starting to connect the edge here with other loops. So now what we need to do is we need to connect this row here. So the way, another way you can tell to make sure you're connecting the correct ones is we connect every other one. So this is the first one we connected on this row. So we're going to skip this one, connect this one, skip this one, connect this one. Same thing on row F. This we connected this one, so skip this one, connect this one, skip this one, connect this one. Same thing on row E. Connect this one, skip, connect, skip, connect. So it's in every other process. You want to make sure this stays lined up so your flag um, looks nice when you're done. So along this top between rows G and F, we're going to use blue to connect these. And along rows A and B, we're going to use blue to connect these here. Then in all these spots in the middle, we're going to fill in the rest of the stars with more white. So to show you what I mean, we're going to use the same exact process. So I'm going to skip this one, come through here. Skip this one, come through here. And I'm going to connect them with a loop. And now, instead of using a blue one right here, I'm going to start using stars to white stars to connect between rows F and E. 
going to go through both of them, making sure that I'm in the correct spot because if I go through here and say here, well, I'm skipping two on this row and only one. We wanna make sure we always skip only one. And I'll staple here. This one's a white. So skip one, skip one, come in these two. This is why I had you lay it out this way when we first started because it makes it a lot easier when you're working along later on. Going to use white between row C and row B. And then remember between rows B and A, we're going to use a blue loop. So now let's stretch this out for just a moment. You can see what we've got going on. It's looking really cool. We've got this edge starting to connect. We've skipped every other one on each of the rows A through G. And we're just gonna keep working down. So when you connect these rows in the middle, not counting G and not counting A, when you connect these rows, you're going to have a blue, white, white, white. So one blue, five white, one blue, at the very end, at the part that's just got the two on blues on the end. And we're going to repeat that process all the way down for the middle. And then between rows G and F and rows B and A, we're going to connect with just blue. So go ahead and get your flag connected together. So here you can see I've connected my flag, the union part of it, and you can see how it kind of creates a grid look between how they're connected, how every other one in the rows is facing a different way and how all the connectors face a different way, but you still have that kind of every other grid kind of look. So now it's time to connect the stripes. So behind me and kind of to the right here, I've got the union that we've just connected. And now of course at the end of all these blue rows that we had, we had these big long rows of the red and white stripes. So just to make sure that you understand what I'm doing here, I do am kind of working this upside down just because of how the flag is laying. So this is row A, this is row B, meaning this is the top of the flag, this is the second row, even though we're kind of working up that way. I just am trying to figure out how best to show you. One last thing I'm also going to mention is these strips that I'm using to connect are not the right length. These are some extra ones because as I mentioned earlier, this flag, we already used it over the weekend as decorations and I'm kind of reconstructing this flag. So I'm just using some scraps that I had on hand. So some of these are too short. So just make sure you cut your paper the right way and your connections will look more like this nice big guy instead of little bitty loops like that. So just wanted to throw that out there. So for connecting these two rows, we've got a white stripe and a red stripe. So you might be wondering, do we do the same process or is it something totally different? And the short answer of it all is yes, we're going to do the same process. I've got these laying out so that way every other one is up and then down and then up and then down. And so that way there's not any twist in the stripes. And then we're going to also connect in every other just as we did before. And you can also see we've got this guy here. So we're not going to connect. So we connect here, don't connect, connect here, don't connect, connect here, and so on and so on. So you might be wondering, do we use red or do we use white? We go ahead and whatever color is on the bottom of the flag, we use that color and connect up. So this is a little looking backwards, so I don't want to make sure this is clear. B on the flag comes below row A. B is below row A. So we're going to use the color that B is, which means we're going to connect this one with white. And so to connect, we're going to use the exact same process we've been doing this whole time. Just come down the one, up the other, cross over, and staple. And we're using white because the bottom row, row B is below A, is white. So that's how we know to use the color white. And we're just going to keep going along every other and stapling them together. Now as you staple along, you want to make sure that it doesn't get twisted because you might look here and think, oh, this one matches with this. But if I make sure I'm doing my every other, we'll notice that, ah, the flag just twisted because I've already got a connection here, so skip these ones, connect here. And I'm going to repeat this process on the way down between these two stripes. So here I've connected rows A and rows B, and you can see I've done the same every other process just like we did here, and it's connected all the way to the end. Now off screen, I've already connected some of these ones. 
together. I haven't connected them all the way, but we're going to look at row C here and row B. We'll just mention this briefly so I make sure you guys get this. C, when the flag is finished, C will be lower than B. Even though right now the way I've got it laying so I can fullness is upside down, C will be below B. So that means we're going to connect with the lower color, which is red. So when we connect these two, when we connect B and C, we're going to use the color that C is, which means we'll use red to connect. Also, I'll point this out, and this might help you as you're connecting. The spot that I used in B to connect to A is the same spot in B that I will use when I connect to C. So as long as I make sure I'm grabbing the correct one C, I can just take my strip and go through the one on B that already has a connection. And I'm just going to staple along and do this with all the tails from the union. So here's another view of the stripes we've just finished putting together. And you can see how they perform form that nice grid kind of look. And how you can have nice even rows. So all that's left to do now is to connect the remaining six stripes. So when we go to connect the last six stripes on here, we're going to use basically the same process we used when connecting these tail ends of the union. The one thing I will mention is that we're going to need to staple onto the blue. So when we connect the row of white onto this blue edge here, we're going to use the same process. So in here, the rule was whatever color was the bottom stripe, we use that color to connect. So after red, below that, we're going to have a white stripe. So when we connect, the rule is going to be we're going to use white to connect. So even when we're connecting onto the blue here, we're going to use white. And you can see our flag coming along so far. And so here we are. This is the mostly completed flag. And the only thing we have left to do is to add on the yellow stripes, and that's going to be how we hang it. Now, it depends on how you want your flag to be oriented, which side you're going to put the stripes on. I usually put the stripes on the left side along the union and those bottom stripes and hang it downwards. But if you want to hang it the other way, you can put the, sh the yellow pieces along the top and hang it that way. So I'll show you how I add those on, and then we'll get this flag hung up. So we're just going to, at the end of each of our long rows, because I'm going to hang it up this way so it's laying down like that, I'm going to just put a yellow loop on every other one starting in the corner and just working my way down. So if you know that you're going to be hanging it up at this end at the end, you can always go ahead when you're making rows A through M, just go ahead and add on the yellow at the end. Or you can wait to decide once your flag is finished which way you're going to hang it up. So I'm just going to work along the side, going in every other and adding a yellow. And then when I'm all done with adding these on, I'm going to run a pull through it and hang it out my bedroom window. There we go. Now our flag is up. And I also want to give a shout out to Beck Pie here. She wasn't actually on the camera a bunch, but she did a lot to help me with this because it's a pretty big task. I mean, it's a big flag after all, right? So I just wanted to give her a shout out. You should check out her channel. It's Beck Pie Slice of Life. Always very cool stuff on there. All right, so there you go. This is our Tutorial Tuesday project. Um, you can whip this up in a couple of hours, especially if you put all the kids to it. They have a lot of fun, cool decoration, and it's a way to show your patriotism for our country. So I, I'm going to go eat a patriotic cookie, and I hope you have a great 4th of July. Happy crafting, everybody.